Hello, I'm the Greek Geek because I'm 50% Greek and 100% a geek. Full disclosure, if DC can keep it up and make movies of this kind of quality or even better, they may actually have a chance of making an actually good extended universe. But before we get ahead of ourselves, here is my review for Birds of Prey. The Joker and I broke up. I wanted a fresh start. But it turns out I wasn't the only Damon Gotham looking for emancipation. So starting with the plot, it is all over the fucking place. Harley Quinn narrates her life, and the entire movie for that matter, and eventually a MacGuffin is introduced in the form of a diamond that helps get the plot rolling and gets all of our heroines together, the birds of prey, to fight against Black Mask and his minions. Very simplistic plot, not much to it, but it didn't need anything that went too deep or made you think too much. You killed his BFF. Ah! <sighs> what? You are so cool. Margot Robbie returns as Harley Quinn and she really knocks it out of the park with her performance as a crazy deranged uh, lunatic essentially and she is an absolute joy to watch. She does a fantastic job of portraying this character I thought in live action form. Fantastic, probably even better than what she did in Suicide Squad and that was one of the few th good things about Suicide Squad. She was easily the standout of this movie. All the other actors and actresses did a good enough job too, I guess. Helena Bertinelli, which is played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I thought she did a pretty good job too, but she was hardly in the movie. So there wasn't really that much to enjoy from her because she was barely in it until right up towards the end. And Journey Smollett-Bell did a really good job as Black Canary as well. I thought she had a bit more development in the movie. You could tell that she was someone who just really didn't want to get involved in things and didn't really want to have to be the good guy and she gets caught up in everything and has to get involved and she eventually, eventually becomes a hero, which was interesting to see. Rosie Perez was Renee Montoya. She's a cop and she's trying to take down Black Mask and other people as well. She was good enough, I guess. It wasn't really that much else to say about her really. I thought she was okay in the role and that's all I've really got to say. Now, Ewan McGregor was a tough one. I was really hoping that he, he would really knock it out of the park as a villain, as Black Mask in this movie, but he was a bit of a letdown to me. Like, he was enjoyable enough. He really does get the narcissistic, sad, sadistic wanker, essentially. He does good at that and he throws a lot of temper tantrums which really kind of takes away his credibility as a villain, I thought, just losing his shit like that and not remaining cool, calm, collected and calculating, which is what I would have preferred. But he does a good enough job too, I guess. But actually, Chris Messina, who plays Victor Zaz, I actually enjoyed him, I think, more than bloody Black Mask. Just the way that he portrayed this guy's enjoyment for cutting people's faces off and cutting into things, including himself and keeping a tally of all the people he's killed and just his utter sadistic enjoyment of inflicting pain on others. He was a henchman that I actually enjoyed and he actually seemed to have a very interesting dynamic with Roman Sionis as well, like kind of trying to keep him calm and collected and being as a sort of weird friend to him. I actually enjoyed that, wasn't expecting that. And you're dumb enough to be building a case against him. So, unless we all want to die very unpleasant death, we're gonna have to work together. As I said before, well acted for the most part by everyone. Margot Robbie, as I said before, she did exceptionally well. Everyone else was just okay to pretty good. But Harley Quinn narrating pretty much the entire movie started to get a bit tiresome to me. And the movie really relied on that, I think, for its humour during a lot of the parts. And when there weren't scenes with Harley Quinn in them and she wasn't narrating, you really noticed it and it seemed to shift the tone of the movie a bit, which is a bit of a problem with me. But then again, that would have meant more Harley Quinn narrating everything. So it can't really win. Really seems like they were trying to copy Deadpool with the constant narration. Like there's even a point where Harley Quinn breaks the fourth wall and talks to the audience, which I think drew a lot of influence from the Deadpool movies. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. Are we ready? This one fully commits to the wacky tone that I think Suicide Squad was trying to establish. 
But this one does it so much better. I really like the unpredictability of Harley Quinn and how she acts and interacts with everyone else. She's just extremely unpredictable, not really sure what she's going to do, and is a complete loony. And is a lot of fun. And unlike Suicide Squad, this one actually had a lot of jokes that I actually enjoyed. A lot of ongoing jokes in it as well, which was fantastic. I was laughing a lot. Everyone in the audience was laughing a lot. It was a really good time. But it turns out... That wasn't the only dame in Gotham looking for emancipation. You fall in now, there was one thing I was not expecting from this movie, was fantastic fight scenes. Uh, with normal superhero movies, I find a lot of the fight scenes are just okay and passable to pretty bad. But this one was phenomenally well choreographed. Like the hand-to-hand -hand fighting scenes involving martial arts... They were filmed extremely well. They were insanely well choreographed. And it was an absolute joy to watch. And I had a fantastic time. And my favorite scene in the entire movie was when Harley Quinn was just beating the shit out of all these bounty hunters and mercenaries in the police station. It was just so much fun. And it was extremely violent as well. It doesn't It really earns that R rating with the violence that goes down. People getting shot in the head. Blood going everywhere, people getting their faces cut off, crossbow bolts through the neck. Oh, it's just so much fun. Woo! Turn it up! So you probably heard from a lot of people that the soundtrack is really, really good. All the songs chosen and the themes in the movie were picked really well and really suit the theme and tone of the whole movie, which was fantastic. I can't really say much more than that other than the music was fantastic. I'm not usually a fan of overly loud music playing over fight scenes. I find they just take, take you out of the fight scene and uh, mess it up a little bit, but this really fit it and I had a bloody good time with it. So I would recommend this movie. DC has finally done another good movie. They've actually been keeping up with doing decent movies nowadays. Nothing terribly mind-blowing or fantastic or anything like that. Just good movies. And if they keep this up, they would, they're going to have a good extended universe. Who would have thought we'd see that? So I'm really hoping that, again, we have another good DC movie with Wonder Woman 1984 coming out later this year. I'm looking forward to that a lot. So... As always, thank you for listening to me ramble on about a movie for a few minutes. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again, and I'll catch you next time.